Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Jay the Great here. Uh, it's been quite some time since, obviously, I've participated in a official debate, but as you can tell by the title and the video itself, that is what exactly is going to partake here today. And uh, I got my good friend Shinobi uh, debating me today on Itachi versus Pain. Just to make okay. the record clear, I'm doing Itachi. He's doing uh, Pain. Obviously, with that comes, uh, we're sticking to prime versions, a hypothetical Itachi, hypothetical Nagato. It's going to be interesting, it's contentious, and that's the reason why we decided to do this very debate here today. If you guys want to catch these live, we are going to do these more in the future. Join my Discord, the link's in the description, and you can watch it live. We got, Me and Batman are going at it next week on a couple of very intriguing topics as well. With all that out of the way, the last thing is Batman will be the official moderator and judge here. Obviously, you guys all watching are judges as well, but Batman will moderate. I'm sure we're, there's not going to be any moderation here. I mean, Shinobi or not. No, you, you know, guys are childish at all. Yeah, so. We're pretty grown, grown, dude. Fucking adults. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grown man, that's not going to be a problem. So. Yeah, we're grown men. There's no either. Yeah. But all right, here we go. Um, Bat, did you want to go first, Shinobi, or do you want me to get my premise? Um, I'll, I'll let you start, man. Go ahead, please. All right, so... I decided to start on the speed analysis uh, be between Itachi and Pain, just to set the record straight for everyone watching. Um, so simply put, the greatest piece of empirical evidence to utilize for Pain versus Itachi is clearly the only empirical feat where we physically see an altercation, which is Edo Nagato versus Edo Itachi. Uh, so continuing on, getting into the speed, Itachi blitzes Nagato on more than one occasion, specifically when saving Naruto and B from soul extraction and shortly after the destruction of the core uh, produced by to execute the Chibaku Tensei. So, two occasions, right? One, when he's saving Killer, uh, Killer B in Naruto, and two, when he is uh, shortly after the, he and Naruto and Killer B destroy the core of the Chibaku Tensei. Right? These events are to be considered blitzes because of the fact that Nagato was able to casually react to Killer B when he tried to save Naruto without even looking at him, and to further reinforce the positive truth value of my proposition. In the manga specifically, you can observe an exclamation point above Nagato's head when Itachi is blitzing him, indicating that he was aware of the attack prior to his successful execution, which indicates he was simply unable to react to it. So, once again, he was aware of it, but simply was unable to react to it, indicating that this is a successful blitz and should be classified as so. Continuing on, though, another piece of empirical evidence to further reinforce my premise and a lot of people don't know this, I should probably put this in the sources for the people watching as well, is that Kabuto himself, after Nagato's defeat, states that Nagato simply wasn't mobile enough to defeat Itachi, indicating his speed wasn't sufficient enough in besting Itachi in battle, and yes, this was after the battle, so meaning after uh, after Nagato got a replenishment in Chakra and was no longer crippled, he st not, Naga Kabuto still wanted, went out of his way to state this. Um, that's very telling, and that indicates Nagato's inferiority in terms of speed. Let me go ahead and put this in the sources page, folks, so you guys are aware of what I'm discussing, and I'm not just pulling it out of my ass. Give me a second here. Uh, I'll just put in the debate stage. Give me a second. Uh, for everyone that's watching live, go to uh, debate stage number one. That's where I'm going to post it real quick. Give me a second while I do that. Uh, I believe it is over here somewhere. Sorry, folks, should be more prepared here. Here we go. And this is the one, I believe. Let me double check. Yes. We gotta post that. You guys should be able to see it now. Uh, to quote what he said, he says, he, Nagato, he's not mobile enough. I thought. Right, so he, he overestimated Nagato's ability while conversely underestimated Itachi's ability. Uh, hence speed, specifically, because he brings up the word mobile, and mobile correlates to speed, mobility. Continuing on. Hence, from these empirical pieces of evidence, the ones that I have uh, produced, and of course, feel free to ask me for any sources for the other things I reference. I'm pretty sure everyone believes me there. Everyone's seen Naruto or Reddit. Um, by far the safest rational conclusion is that Prime Itachi is faster than Prime Nagato, with, again, my conclusion being supported by actual empirical feats rather than statements where interpretations can vary from subjective lens to subjective lens, indicating an inconclusive, arbitrary level of reliability that cannot safely be established in comparison to my premise here. So I guess I'll stop there. That's my speed analysis if you want to counter me or uh, have your own scaling. Okay. Um, so essentially... Where I'm going to be deduced to most of my um, premises and abilities would be from Nagato primarily as a prime iteration of himself and utilizing that as a reference towards what I'm considering 
a hypothetical prime, uh, prime pain, excuse me. So uh, we did see Edo Nagato go against opponents that Itachi did as well. Um, Nagato never did, I mean, Itachi never did face Nagato one on one uh, the entire time. Uh, Nagato was uh, preoccupied by Kabuto's orders to steal the soul from uh, Naruto to uh, stow it away, essentially, to have a bargain chip, if you will, against uh, Obito. Um, because he ultimately wanted to gain favor in the war. Um, so that being said, um, he was being controlled, and it wasn't necessarily Nagato um, in full discretion of his uh, abilities at that time. And so um, Itachi never really blitzed him. It was more of a matter that Nagato was preoccupied, and now that the tangible stats are not much of a difference, there is the question of Hat's abilities that play a huge factor as to when the favor of the battle goes in to uh, Nagato or Payne's favor. So um, I'll just keep it there for the time being, and uh, I'll discuss more why as to why I feel this way. All right. So a couple of points I'd like to question to uh, get some su substantiation. Um, so when you say it's not a blitz... Would you agree that Nagato wasn't utilizing the maximum amount of arms that he could produce from his body when uh, Itachi hit him with the Susano? You're asking, did he or did he not utilize the maximum amount of arms? Yeah. What, what is your opinion on that? Um, so the Osura path, which is essentially the same path that utilizes the extra arm growth ability, yeah. if you will, um, it had like at least four, um, from my recollection. So despite it having the maximum capability of like producing arms it's the fact that nagato was literally in a soul exchange with naruto and facing off b as well from an attack that allowed itachi to uh hinder him at that time right but here's the more so valid deduction i came with which is backed up empirically or at least inductively at the very best one i referenced the exclamation point above his head Right, and then if the if there is a question about whether or not his arms were preoccupied and he could not react, well, rationally I would conclude that he was already in a soul extraction altercation with Naruto, but casually, without even looking, was able to react to Killer B casually and begin the soul extraction of him. And to further even reinforce my premise, because I sort of uh, predicted this would occur, I could prove that Nar that Nagato didn't use the maximum number of arms. Uh, in fact. Let me go to sources real quick here. Uh, the Asura path is capable of utilizing six, which Nagato on no panel during his altercation with Killer B, Naruto, and, and Itachi respectively ever utilizes. Uh, we see the Asura path in the pain arc utilize six when he is combating Itachi, indicating that he is not using uh, the maximum number of arms that are possible for the Renegon, uh, Renegon's abilities. I'm trying to find the exact scan hey, here where Jay, real that. quick, I apologize, brother. Um, did you post that scan in there? Um, yes. I think you said you did it, but I don't see it. Yeah, it's on debate stage number one. Am I tripping? I, I see the Kabuto thing. Yeah, that, that's the one I was talking about. I mean, that, I haven't posted the new one yet. Oh, okay. I thought you were uh, talking about the like the robot scene. Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is on. Uh, let me look for it real quick. Yeah, I'm looking for a scan as well. Uh, I haven't posted it yet, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to find it. I was just asking. So I was just looking out for. I didn't know if you thought you sent it or not. So this way you could look at it and I think it was, argue. Um, all right. So this is where he's utilizing. We see how many arms Nagato is using currently um, against Killer B, Itachi, and Killer and uh, Naruto, respectively. He has about four. Given the benefit of the doubt, he has about four there. Um, yeah. Take. <clears throat> and then we see the Astra Astra pass conversely utilizing more arms. Apologies for that. I thought I had it, but I guess not. All right, come on. Here we go. All right, there you go. There you go. Here it comes. All right, so here you could uh, visualize six arms. Well, conversely, you taught, uh, at best, we can give the benefit of the doubt to Nagato using four here. So mm -hmm. basically, the empirical piece of evidence suggests that, one, he had a exclamation point above his head. And empirically, when we see exclamation points in any anime within any narrative that indicates that you're aware of what is taking place, and that usually implies a blitz as well. We saw Kakuzu. Similarly, you can get blitzed by Naruto with an exclamation point above his head, and we can all conclude that that was a blitz as well. Um, so, basically, inductively, if you were to take a mass amount of instances where an individual is being attacked with an exclamation point above his head, and then we 
later see him getting attacked successfully that indicates that he's aware but is not able to react in time indicating a successful blitz so that's one pillar from my premise the second one is again the osteopath is utilizing six arms Nagato is only utilizing four, indicating that he was not able to produce more arms in time, which just further reinforces my premise that he lacks the speed to do so. Um, so all those pieces of empirical evidence, plus my rationalization that he was already in a soul altercation with Naruto, but was still able to react to Killer B, reinforces my premise that he just lacks the speed. And again, Kabuto reinforces that notion by saying he lacks the mobility, which implies he lacks the speed. So that's my counter to my opponent's counter to my first premise, I guess. Okay, so um, well, as we both have established, Nagato is clearly in a soul exchange with Naruto, who is a uh, nine tails in Cherokee, right? Um, to win the battle against Naruto would require a huge amount of chakra to win that said tug of war. So that alone, that ability is it, it's essentially requiring requiring a lot more chakra than it would be if not or if, if Pain by himself is facing Itachi because he's not hindered by trying to use all this chakra to like get Naruto's soul, which is a direct order from Kabuto in the first place. And the fact that uh, Nagato isn't Edo Tensei, it doesn't really matter if he gets hit because he just regenerates anyway. So Kabuto is fully aware of this, um, especially how he is controlling uh, Nagato to begin with. So because he is preoccupied with Naruto and B, and the fact that the... Um, effect of hitting him like Itachi did wouldn't play much of a factor as we saw uh, later in the battle. So that would be my uh, counter argument to that. All right. So my counter to the premise that just because he's an Edo doesn't matter. It would matter because Kabuto's orders were to win and triumph in this battle. And I'm sure Kabuto wanted the eight and nine tails under his control. So rationally, it wouldn't logically makes sense for Kabuto to be okay with Nagato being intercepted by Itachi because that that would be detrimental to his goal and essentially it was detrimental indicating that it did matter so despite it not affecting him physically the final the final goal and overall objective of Kabuto was to win that exchange and to take the eight and nine tails to have some sort of compromising power over uh, what he thought was Madara aka Obito for the sake of compromise and negotiation to be in his favor. So uh, to reiterate, just because it's an Edo doesn't mean Kabuto would be okay with Nagato being intercepted. In fact, he goes out, like I said earlier, he goes out of his, out of his way to illustrate that that was a problem, indicating that his mobility was not sufficient in being able to evade or intercept Itachi's interception, indicating that, again, he just lacks the speed. Um, and I would say... Again, he was certainly capable of producing more arms, which I already indicated, which further reinforces that he could have, if he had the reaction speed, react to Itachi. Now, as far as the chakra argument, I guess you'd have to substantiate how chakra directly correlates to speed. And you'd also have to substantiate how much chakra, if you could quantify that, which would be difficult, is being extracted in this soul altercation. To my knowledge, I don't see any sort of metric to determine how much a soul ripping altercation uh, uh, siphons you as far as stamina, which again, actually doesn't matter because Nagato has infinite chakra. So in fact, scratch that, the premise wouldn't matter anyway because Edo Nagato has essentially infinite chakra just like all, all other Edos do. So that premise actually wouldn't work. Um, so it's, essentially my premise still holds unless you want to counter it again or we can move on. It's up to you. Um, yeah, I think I've said all I need to say basically on this right. point. So yeah, we can move on. So yeah, speed feats, folks. That's the speed part. If the moderator or judge wants to note that, um, we're moving on though. Um, all right. Uh, did you want to go uh, first this time on the next point or did you want to, um, want me to go first? Again? Uh, what'd you want to go over exactly? Like, uh, um, abilities to have for like... uh, I have AP. It's quite short on my side, at least if you want me to go first or, uh, you could discuss AP. It's, it's up to you. Um, yeah, I can go. Uh, so, essentially, um, as we know, with the Diva Path, who is controlled by um, the withered, decrepit Nagato, who is siphoning energy from the Ghetto Statue to keep his existence maintained, is able to um, influx enough chakra to the Diva Path to create a chaotic Shimura Tensei, uh, which is village level. Um, and that's just by himself. 
Uh, again, this is a, a weaker Nagato than the one that I'm talking about. This would be uh, relative to the old withered Edo Nagato that we saw during the war arc. So um, a prime Nagato, or pain rather, would uh, definitely have more AP as to quantify that. Obviously, I can't empirically say that, but um, that's just for the Diva Path alone. Uh, the Chewbacca Tensei has enough AP to uh, suck anything in the uh, surrounding environment, able to uh, re restrain the Six Tails uh, Naruto, and would be able to um, restrain Itachi as well, just given his um, a uh, his uh, actions with the Chewbacca Tensei and War Arc and things of that nature. Um, and so, yeah, uh, there's nothing that Itachi has exhibited that's more powerful than what the passive pain can do, uh, let alone just uh, the diva path by himself. All right. So to give my analysis on the AP, simply put, Prime Itachi's AP is unquantifiable. Um, Itachi not destroying the source of Nagato Shibaku Tensei does not prove that he can't destroy it on his own. Itachi is known for his high intelligence. So with Itachi having the numbers advantage against Nagato, the obvious most rational strategy to maximize the chances of success against the core of the Chibaku Tensei is to have all three combatants utilize the most powerful long-distance ninjutsu like Itachi specified to maximize their AP and overall maximize their chances of success. So hence him not attempting to destroy the Chibaku Tensei on his own doesn't prove he lacks the necessary AP to destroy it, but rather his high intelligence, I might add. So hence comparing Nagato's and Itachi's AP is essentially impossible. Itachi has never pushed to his limits when in battle throughout his career as a shinobi, allowing me to deduce Itachi's AP is unquantifiable, and hence the AP debate unworthy at all. I would not conclude one way or the other who has the AP uh, advantage, and I believe that the speed advantage that I have, I believe I have established, uh, would make it negligible anyway, because Nagato would simply be too slow to catch Itachi slipping on the balance of probabilities. So simply put. AP is not worthy of debate to me. I don't know if you want to counter that, but that would be my uh, my analysis of that. Yeah, sure. So um, the argument that Itachi was just being um, constructive, or I suppose uh, articulate in his actions with including B and Naruto to destroy the Chewbacca Tensei is certainly an interpretation. But what it's empirically shown is he literally asked Naruto, like, how did you survive this? Like, um, what do we do? Things of that nature. And then afterwards, he deduced that they all need to use their strongest jutsu at that time. Now, there's nothing to indicate that by himself, Itachi can take on the Chewbacca Tensei. There's nothing to indicate that at all. It's just pure speculation, honestly. Um, and so in terms of the speed, um, Nagato went up against Killer B and Naruto. Um, Itachi went up against Killer uh, KCM1 Naruto. So... Their speed isn't that gargantuan, and as I, um, in terms of difference, of course, and as I established earlier, um, Nagato was preoccupied with Naruto and B, and allowed Itachi the opening, which um, didn't really like deliver the final blow to Nagato at the end. And again, Nagato is receiving direct orders from Kabuto all the time, which is um, afflicting his uh, control and things of that nature. And I can actually send a scan if you don't mind giving me a little bit of time. Uh, I should have yeah, it sure. like right here. I, I took a long ass time, so. <laughs> yeah, I feel it. So this is on the back of uh, volume 58. It kind of talks right. about that a little bit. All right. So, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's kind of implied that they obviously don't want to work for Kabuto, but he puts them in a control to do the things he does, and because he does, they're forced to do these things. It's not in character for these characters to do what they did. Like, Damian Amaterasu with Itachi, he's, uh, uh, he's obviously, as an alive iteration, is going to be a lot more conservative with his abilities. And um, I can show you another scan that shows that he really isn't that fully aware of characters' abilities and how he can implement them as well. Mm. Um, where is it? Um, just real quick, uh, it's up to you guys. Jay, do you want to respond to that scan first and then move to the next thing, or do you just want to um, finish? I could let him finish, that's fine, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna check with you guys. Yeah, yeah it's all up to you, bro. I don't mind either way. Oh, you're good. I, I, I rambled on during the speed a lot, so yeah, you can keep <laughs> <be> going. 
I'm okay, just making yeah, sure I don't want to. I don't want another Gios manchild moment again. I trust oh. me. Neither one of those. Are the, neither one of those. That, that would never happen. Yeah, I'm just throwing some uh, shit. I don't even know what happened, man. You don't want to know. I don't. Okay, cool. Okay, and then here's another scan right here where um, obviously Mu is the second um, Mizukage. I'm sorry, I always forget. But essentially, after using his fission ability, he can't use the particle, uh, particle dismantling jutsu. And Kabuto is essentially ordering him to do that, but he doesn't know that he can't use that jutsu when underneath the fission. So there are instances where it is um, on, on Suchikage. Thank you very much, Spencer. I appreciate it. Um, so there are instances where Kabuto doesn't know the full spectrum of what the character can do in question. And it's a lot different than what if they could do knowing full well what they can do by themselves, if that makes sense. All right. So I'll attack each premise first. Um, so essentially what I say when it comes to statements, which uh, my opponent referenced one, um, statements are certainly overrided by uh, empirical feats. We see hyperbolic statements and literality put into question several times in canonical pieces of literature. We see... Tamari's win stated as universal. We see the Sharingan stated as things that the the dojutsu that can see all things in the universe. So simply put, the empirical piece of evidence that I reference is a physical feat that is observable to the reader, while conversely statements can be interpreted in various ways, uh, allowing us to conclude them as having an arbitrary level of reliability from in, from subjective lens to subjective lens. And the best way to establish reliability is to compare the statement in question to the empirical features that the empirical feats that are provided. So when it comes to the first feat here, rationally, I can conclude that Kabuto has, if we're being generous, probably hundreds, tens to hundreds of shinobi on the battlefield. There is no logical way for him to know every single ability of every single shinobi as their arsenals obviously widely vary from Nagato to Itachi to the Suchikage to the Mizukage, there are tons of arsenals and there is no logical way that one shinobi could know every single detail of all the others. I think that would be a very hard premise to prove. Um, you'd have to essentially be a supercomputer, a god, which Kabuto certainly is not. Um, so simply put, he doesn't need to know everything. Essentially what he does, and we've seen this various times with, with Nagato as well, he puts them in a robot-like state where he gives them an order. We saw it with Zabuza and Haku. He said, go after them. At first, they were displaying personality and hesitance, but as soon as he removed that, there was no longer hesitance. He was in full control. And he did the same thing with Nagato as well. He removed his personality, and this was a Nagato with, I would say, killer intent or the intent to succeed at the very least. So simply put, he doesn't need to know everything um, for the Edo Tenseis to do, their, to do his bidding, because if that were the case then he would have a huge problem because there'd be no way for him to rationally know every single ability of, of and every single arsenal of every single Edo Tensei that he has on the battlefield. That's impossible um, for someone of his caliber, unless you're a computer, which he is not again. So essentially the second uh, source my opponent used would be null and void by my, by my rationalization. I think it's a very good one. So uh, simply put, going back to what he said earlier, trying to remember what he said um, as far as... Uh, what was the first thing you said before the uh, scans? My bad. Um, I believe it was just uh, going over like the speed, essentially. The speed, yeah. I'm trying to remember what you said. You said uh, that speed can be just, quantified, right? You said, is that what you said? Uh, just essentially. No, no, of course. I, I appreciate it. Sorry about that. Um, uh, essentially, just like the example of what we saw with uh, Itachi. I mean, so... The example of what we saw with Nagato, Naruto, and B would be different than what it would be with uh, Pain versus Itachi. Just a one v one. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. No, you know no, what no, I mean? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. All right. So, the only contentious aspect is the destruction of the Chibaku Tensei, which I would classify as inconclusive. Which is why I had my speed and my AP analysis as such. There's no way to conclude what Itachi's uh, AP is. So, making one premise. Or the other, with, whether it's my premise, what, what my hypothetical premise would be, or the antithesis, which is what your premise would be, neither one could really exist because it's unquantifiable. Um, and it's quite impossible to establish reliability, reliability of either premise, which one being Itachi has more AP, or the antithesis being pain has the AP advantage. There's no way to establish that, which is why the AP is inconclusive. And to me, negligible regardless, because the speed advantage, um, going back to that, uh, I'll just stick 
to the empirical pieces of evidence I referenced. Again, I'll just re-reference them. And, and uh, the question mark over Nagato's head, the fact that he didn't utilize the maximum amount of arms that he could produce, as evident by the osteopath using six, and the very fact that he's an Edo Tensei, so he doesn't have to worry about chakra and him getting fatigued. So there is no real reason, uh, rationally, based off the empirical pieces of evidence provided, that he could have not reacted if he had the speed to do so. The only rational conclusion, the most rational conclusion, is that he lacks the speed in doing so. Um, but we already discussed speed, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up since you brought that up again. But um, as far as AP, I'll stick to my conclusion as well. It's unquantifiable. It's unconclusive. Hence, it doesn't really matter anyway, regardless, because Itachi's faster anyway, which I think I have proven. Uh, but yeah, if you want to counter anything I said or move on to the next, uh, it's up to you, though. But yeah, that's my response. Um, sure. I mean, I will agree with you, Jay, that it is hard to quantify exactly. I mean, it is kind of inconclusive, right, how strong Itachi's AP would be. Um, but what we do know for sure, it's not enough by itself to eclipse the Chewbacca Tensei just based off what we saw. There's nothing to indicate that he for sure can do so. It's more so just a speculation argument. So I'll just stick to what has been empirically shown and provide that to validate my argument as well. And um, right. yeah. All right. So I agree that there's no way, there's no way to say one way or the other. And that's my point, right? Me saying a Itachi has more AP or you conversely saying the antithesis of that is inconclusive and unprovable. Hence, it's negligible to even debate it in the first place, and it's further negligible because, again, I've re I have reinforced the, the notion that he has superior speed. I believe the empirical pieces of evidence that are presented that I can extrapolate from suggest my premise rather than my opponent's, which is the, anti the antithetical premise that Nagato is faster. Um, the way it was illustrated, it suggests Itachi's superiority, um, and the rationalizations that I have provided uh, also substantiate and reinforce that premise as well. Um, so... I'll stick to my conclusion. Um, Itachi's faster based off the empirical pieces of evidence, and the AP is negligible regardless because he wouldn't that wouldn't be a problem anyways because he's faster. Um, so yeah. All righty. Um, do you guys want to move on from the AP then, since you've provided uh, all the yeah. reasoning? Yeah. To uh, sub yeah, we're just kind of going ad nauseum. Yeah, yeah, we yeah are. it's going a little bit circular at this point. It's circular. Yeah. 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 All right. So, all right. Um, did you want to go uh, bring up the next point you wanted to discuss, or you want me to um, move on to the next? Uh, bring up another point or something else? Another yeah, what, what do you want to go over next exactly? Um, I'm open to whatever. The next point is narrative representation. This is further reinforcing Itachi's superiority. So essentially, the key character of interest is Obito, right? Obito refers to Nagato as his underling, which I'll prove right now. I have the scan here. I'm pretty sure I have that scan saved. So I'm not just pulling that out of my ass. And um, give me a second here. Where does he say that? I believe it is this scan. Give me a second, folks. Yes. So he's, he's having a conversation with Sasuke, and he says, I believe it was this one, my underling pain destroyed Konoha, right? So that's his sort of demeanor towards pain, and the very fact that he is pulling the strings behind the scenes and is always the leader, actually, and we see various, uh, you know, interactions between the two where Nagato is sort of intimidated by his power. Uh, we see it in the Rain Village when uh, he kind of phases through Nagato when talking to him. We see it when they first meet, he phases through him to sort of establish intimidation, which reinforces the premise that Obito is superior. While conversely, we all know these famous uh, these famous statements here. Uh, where is it here? I believe it was... Was it this one? Give me a second. Where Obito says, if it weren't... Uh, let's see. I read it, read it to reference it exactly. Thankfully, Itachi didn't know everything about me, or else I would be dead. Indicating, you know, the, the very fact that he sees Itachi at, at bare minimum a rival. I think that is very safe to say. If you want to compete against the premise that he sees him as a superior, fine. He is sick, fine. But he certainly sees him as a rival. And keep in mind, this is a sick Itachi. We're talking about Prime Itachi, who is arbitrarily times stronger than the Itachi in question, and the Itachi that Obito specifically referencing here. Um, so these two scans that I am providing sort of illustrate that dichotomy that obito had with with pain and conversely with itachi and we see a difference between how he speaks of itachi which i would say highly and how he speaks of nagato and i would say in, in a more low sense um, to further reinforce that he also says now that itachi has gone uh, there's no more threats in my way um give me a second here while i do this which scan mm -hmm. is this uh i had this scan for a reason why did i have it here 
Oh, we see the uh, negotiation between Yellow Mass Obito and a young Itachi. Negotiation implies compromise. Compromise implies respect. Respect in a battle, a battle themed anime implies relativity in terms of combat prowess, as that's the very premise of Naruto. Um, so simply put, these guys are certainly relative from a very young age, and that continues. Obito's respect of him continues, even as his illness progresses. Um, as we all know, Itachi substantially deteriorates in health, and even up until his death, Obito respected him to such a high degree that he never even dared go to Konoha, because once he did, after his death, he says, unless, and again, if you want me to look for that scan, I can, he says, now that he's gone, there's no threat to me, right? Indicating that Itachi was a threat, which uh, is a very strong word. Just let me know. Yeah, if if uh, Shinobi wants me to bring that up, yeah, I could yeah, I could yeah. find it. Oh uh, um, yeah, I'll be man. I'm not tripping. Yeah, so essentially, these sort of narrative representations of these characters illustrate the dichotomy again between Obito and these two combatants, and and essentially I've established that it is clear which of the two is held in higher esteem by the narrative. And Kishimoto himself, he's using Kishimo he's using Obito as a vessel to illustrate the superiority of Itachi, and again. Going back to the Edo exchange, that further illustrates Itachi's superiority, with the only contentious aspect being the AP, which, honestly, simply put, is inconclusive, so it doesn't really fracture, or definitely not remove my premise as far as the strength is concerned. So simply put, the, narr the narrative representation just further suggests and reinforces the premise I've already established, that uh, Itachi is superior, but yeah, that's my uh, analysis of the narrative representation, if you want to counter me. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and tackle the Obito statement, essentially. Um, so in regards to him speculating that Itachi could have brought him down, as you've already indicated, at that time, he's talking to Sasuke. He's more than likely referring to his sick and decrepit Itachi, which, as we know, would definitely not be able to match up against someone who is like Orange Mask Obito, who has a yellow mask, 14 year years old, was already on base Minato level. And we saw a prime Itachi, essentially, like Edo, uh, be on that same par. So that would be null and void. There's also the factor that Itachi does have a unique arsenal. He does have things like the Izanami, which would play a factor in someone like Obito, who definitely has a conflicted heart, as we saw later in the series with Naruto doing his infamous talk no jutsu. Um, so it would certainly be a possibility. Now, it's as to speculation as to how Itachi would be him exactly, and like I said earlier, it's just speculation. Now, um, I also do have a scan for Pain being highly regarded by another Akatsuki member. I'm trying to find that there right now. Uh, do, do, do. Sorry, man. Uh, what's it called? Uh, who are you referring to? Uh, it's Zetsu. Zetsu? Yeah. You want me to get that for you? Um... You don't mind. I should have it here, though, honestly. Okay. If you get it, you can post it, but if I beat you to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, take your time. So good. Yeah, sorry about that, man. That's good. I, it happened to me. <laughs> We're good, yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll try to find out right now. But basically, what was uh, stated by Zetsu was, like, I can't believe no one could beat the likes of pain, essentially. Something along that, uh, along that line. And as we know, Zetsu is a, a scout for Dukatsuki. He knows about Itachi to a, a good degree, at least. I mean, he doesn't know about the Totsuka Blade and stuff like that, but he does know that Itachi is um, capable of the Mangeko and his abilities and things of that nature. So he has some reconnaissance on him, at the very least. Um, and then there's also the factor that Nagato was hailed as like the child of prophecy by Jiraiya, who he only gave the title to the two other people, that being Minato. And Naruto, who actually was the freaking prophecy. Um, so, and it wasn't far fetched because the kid had literally the Rinnegan, and it was uh, prophesized that this child will be the one to change the world, essentially. So, in that regard, um, he has high redeem uh, by the Sage Toads, who literally trained Takaromo and um, had been around since almost the dawn of existence for the Shinobi world. So, their word um, definitely means something, and Jiraiya. I uh, studied underneath him for a long time. I wouldn't just give this title to literally anybody. And it was stated that it would be an apprentice of his, so it definitely made sense narratively as well. Um, there's also the fact that in Amagakuri, there is uh, all the shinobi there are basically revering him as God. Um, and 
basically that is his name to anyone who hears about him essentially so uh narratively uh even in the data books he's like stated to be an invincible god so there are, there are plenty of uh narrative implications to really put nagato or pain in a really high tier um as well so i i would i would definitely say itachi doesn't um he's obviously regarded highly but itachi i mean i'm sorry pain has a lot of statements that really like up him up as well so yeah all right so when it comes to statements like i've said previously and not even in this debate just in general um th when looking at them at face value there is certainly an arbitrary level of reliability and falsifiability that has to be determined by what we can see observably physically in the manga and again, going back to the only altercation that we can reference, it's pretty clear who was illustrated as a superior. So even if there's a hyperbolic statement saying that, that Pain is a god, the literality is certainly questionable. His very defeat implies he's not a god. And now, I would say that the statements in question from both sides, from mine and, my, and the antithetical stance of my opponents, can be questioned. But the reason why my narrative analysis holds more true and more guaranteed, conversely, is because there is, again, a physical altercation between the two where it's clear who came out on top, with the only, again, contentious aspect of that altercation being the Shibaku Tensei's destruction, which, again, would be negligible regardless because Itachi's faster. If Itachi wouldn't have to worry about Naruto and Killer B, if it was one-on-one, -on -one, he would simply blitz him like he did when he stopped him from soul-extracting Naruto and, and Killer B, and then when he sealed him after the destruction of the Shibaku Tensei. So, if anything, it would be a quicker, more successful attack based on the fact that he doesn't have liabilities that he has to worry about, which were Naruto and Killer B. He was the superior on the battlefield during that time, which was illustrated pretty clearly by Kishimoto. So once again, the statements that I reference are reinforced by the by the empirical piece of evidence, hence my premise re is reinforced further than my opponent's antithetical stance because he has no empirical pieces of evidence that are observable and physical to substantiate his claim that pain is superior. So simply put, my opponent's premise is more falsifiable than my own, hence my premise is more guaranteed so that's my counter to the uh statements the statement argument okay, uh, shall so, we, shall we do, sorry just to make sure that's kind of just that's the one you want right i just want to make sure uh it's not actually it's oh, okay. um yeah i can look one more time hang on i'm sorry man i swear i had this it was certainly sure? okay, okay yeah yeah for sure i know that for a fact Okay, so I just wanted to say real quick that in a, in a, in a versus battle with Itachi and Pain, obviously, we're, we're talking about Itachi versus six people, correct? And what really amps uh, Nagato's lack in mobility is really the extra perception granted to him by the extra passive Pain. Um, he also is a very exceptional um, sensory-type ninja. Um, so let me at least drop these for you because I'm slacking. All right. Yeah, um, and uh, just a heads up, you know, I might not be able to find that Zetsu one. I, I thought that was it. Um, so if you do want to look for it, um, I'm still trying, but I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Yeah, I, I should have it, bro. Give me one second. I appreciate you, Batman. Thank you, dude. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me drop this one other scan real quick, though. Okay, so basically, like, with the other passive pain and all he has to do is literally to summon rain and everything he feels in that uh, aoe he can literally sense and even sense how formidable opponent uh the person in the aoe would be um he also can sense um he's also extremely exceptional at sensory abilities when uh literally feeling the pressure that was emitting from itachi's eye thought it was amaterasu which does imply he does have prior knowledge on itachi which does make sense narratively because he was the um, leader of the Akati. Um, and Zetsu was a, a scout for him as well. And he was the one who was the um, the one who started the Akatsuki, essentially. He took on Yagiko's message and made the Akatsuki who it was. And he was really responsible for recruiting everyone in there. So he does have prior knowledge. He does have the capabilities of sensing um specifically ocular uh genjutsu as i've indicated here and um yeah with other passive pain it really amps his uh, lack of mobility essentially 
All right, so to counter the six passive of pain being implied by my opponent to be uh, a mobility enhancer, we certainly know that the, that the passive of pain vary in power and capability. It seems, based off the empirical pieces of evidence, that, uh, of course, the Diva Path seems to be the most capable, right, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sage Mode Naruto, who had all the prep time in the world, and then, after being fatigued in a prolonged battle, and after a chaotic Shinra Tensei, was still able to run away from six till Naruto. So, simply put, they certainly vary in power. Um, but I would argue that Nagato, in his prime, is superior to the Paths of Pain, even in the Rain Village, uh, based off the speed that we do see from Edo Nagato. Edo Nagato was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with KCM1 Naruto. So the argument that uh, the Paths of Pain give enhanced mobility and the implication of greater speed is certainly not correct if you go based off the empirical pieces of evidence that are available. Again, Edo Nagato had much better speed feats in comparison to the Paths of Pain, where even in the Rain Village, three of the Paths of Pains were exterminated and vanquished by Jiraiya, who's certainly inferior to anyone we're discussing currently in this debate. Um, so certainly, simply put, Nagato is cer certainly more capable than the Paths of Pain. Um, and regardless of that, he still was Blitz, as I have reinforced, by Itachi on more than one occasion. Um, so simply put, the, pa the, the numbers advantage would be negligible to Itachi, since he's going to be even faster than he would be against just Nagato alone, who's faster than the Paths of Pain. Um, so that would be my argument. And again, the empirical pieces of evidence reinforce that premise um, when comparing performances between the Passive Pain and Nagato, respectively. So uh, the Passive Pain do not make you more mobile and do not give you more speed. In fact, it'd be probably a disadvantage. You'd be even slower in comparison to Itachi, um, in comparison to Nagato. So. Yeah, so um, my argument per se isn't really that it amps um, the mobility per se. I'm saying that the extra perception allows the user to get over the hump of the lack of mobility essentially um so as nagato does influx chakra into any one of the passive pains he can even nullify them at whim if you want to to influx more chakra into another path of pain um he could utilize that to uh, protect against another path of pain or um it would be up to you really to prove that with this extra perception, Itachi can blitz pain one on one uh, with the extra perception, and before the Diva Path, let's say, can undo, uh, can unleash uh, uh, Shinra Tensei to uh, bounce him off or repel a ninjutsu or something of that matter. So, I'm not saying again. I'm, I'm not saying that it makes him faster, like combat speed wise. It just gives him extra perception because they're all seeing the same thing, the same opponent at the exact same time. And Nagato sees that as well, so that's what helps them. Uh, yeah. What what counters that is the very the very piece of empirical evidence that I have referenced several times. The very fact that Nagato didn't need even to see Killer B to casually react to him and produce another arm to counter him and hold him down to extract his soul. Yet Itachi was successful in doing so. So despite the argument of perception, Nagato doesn't necessarily need to look. Um, an argument against that would be he could use his animal summonings, which I think were present during that time, which further reinforces my premise that he just simply was unable to react to the attack that uh, Itachi executed. Um, so simply put, the perception and the, 360, the theoretical 360 field of vision that the six pass of pain would give would be useful, but neg negligible to someone of superior speed, such as Itachi, um, which I don't think has been disproven since I've uh, established that premise. Uh, so that's my counter. Okay, but um, we would have to, like, equivalent that scenario to a 1v1 with pain, is what I'm trying to say, though, without uh, the user trying to, like, like the human path, I believe, trying to rip out the soul of someone and also reacting to someone else, which undoubtedly requires chakra and requires you to focus on two people at the same time, at the very least. So it's just, it's not equivalent to what it would be in a 1v1 battle, is all I'm trying to say. Yeah, but to counter your prem your uh, your counter argument, chakra is negligible because they're Edo's. Chakra is not a, is not a problem. Um, and again, I'll just stick by, uh, even though it's ad nauseum to what I said previously. Nagato was able to intercept another individual and still had sparing arms. If we presuppose that the maximum number of arms is six, um, so simply put, if he had the adequate speed, he would have reacted to Itachi. There wouldn't have been a question mark above his head if he was not aware of it, and he would have reacted to Itachi having two more spare arms at the very least if he was capable of doing so. Again And again, Chakra is negligible because they're Edo's. Chakra exhaustion is not a problem for them um, in that altercation. So. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, of course. 
Yeah, I, yeah, okay. I just want to say, like, I, I don't want to, like, go circle it on this, but, like, again, yeah. Kabuto was controlling Nagato, and right before that instance happened, he literally said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take their soul, I'm going to sew it away, and then I want to use that as a bargaining chip, like I said earlier. So, like, they, they were underneath uh, direct control, and it would be different than Pain just fighting by himself, using his abilities at whim, essentially. Hmm. Since we are going in circles, I'll just reinforce one more time, and then I could ask to move on. Um, like I said previously, Kabuto takes away personality. He simply gives a command, and the command is to be enacted how the character, not controlled, would do if he had that very will. Uh, mimicked on his own accord. So simply put, all he did was tell Nagato to do what he had to do, and he failed to do so because he was incapable of doing so. He lacked the speed to do so, which I reinforced several times. Um, but did you have any new points? Because um, at this point, from my lens, yeah, this is I yeah, this is going yeah, back and forth. I feel like thing. I have I have gone the better of the exchanges. Um, again, that's up to the judges, but from my lens, yeah, of course it is. I've gone yeah, the better of the exchanges. Um, and if you have any new points you want to bring up, by all means. Uh, Shinobi, do you have any anything more for speed or anything, or for narrative scaling, anything like that, or or you guys or new or aspects if you have any? Yeah. Yep. Um, well, I would like to bring up the fact that um, the Diva Pass uh, can literally levitate. Just to be honest, um, and the fact that the Animal Path does have an invisible chameleon that um, Mitachi wouldn't be able to sense because. Uh, even the Toad Sages on Jiraiya's back when it wasn't able to sense them, they had to use a creature uh, detection jutsu. Um, I could send you that if you'd like to. Actually, I will, just to, just to be thorough. But, um, and we do know that the, um, as the scan I've sent earlier, the Chameleon and the Snake were able to uh, hold down um, the KCM1 Naruto uh, before he did the uh, soul-stealing thing. And I will send a scan on KCM1 Naruto's uh, sensor. You still there? Still here, Shinobi? I think he cut out. <laughs> yeah, I think we lost him. I don't think he's actually here right now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear us? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, you cut, out. you cut out for yeah. a second. Yeah, you cut out, so we didn't hear, like, anything you were saying. The only thing I heard uh, from last time um, was that Tendo Pain can fly, he can levitate, and the summoning, the chameleon, the summoning can turn invisible and was able to hold Casey of Naruto. That's all I heard from you. Thank okay, you. yeah, so... Yeah, so I just sent a scan on saying that, like, Jiraiya basically said it's invisible. Yeah. Um, the Toad Sage are obviously perfect sages, and they can't sense them. We know Sage Mode is a, a very enhanced reception ability. And then uh, there's also KCM1 Naruto in that scan that uh, basically he has the capabilities of sensing negative emotions and the chameleon obviously had the intent to restrain Naruto and was negative as a result. So, um, yeah. All right, so as I don't far know as why I cut out, though. Sorry. Yeah, it's part of the internet. It's all good. As far as the summoning, I don't think it would come down to that because I think Itachi's speed, again, was illustrated quite beautifully by Kishimoto in comparison to uh, Nagato's. And unless you can counter the fact that he's not faster... Simply put, the animal summonings would not be a factor because Itachi would end it before it comes to that, um, which I will just reference the, again, the event that I've referenced the entire debate. Um, uh, yeah, really quick, Shinobi. So basically, uh, just to make sure, um, anything that you uh, basically bring up, whether it's pain, jutsu, this, this, and that, Jay's always going to come back with the, uh, the same response with the whole speed thing because basically yeah. all that would be redundant if he's not fast enough to do anything. So... Um, ba unless you have like something more for like speed or anything like that or whatnot, then you can kind of go that route or like for narrative scaling. If not, and you also like believe you won the speed thing and everything, then you can continue to talk with like other jutsus and stuff. That's obviously is relevant for this fight because that is important. Yeah, uh, but that, that's why Jay's saying what he's saying. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm not saying that uh, Nagato is per se like. Uh, faster. All I'm saying is that they both fought against the same exact opponents, which would indicate that they're relative at the very at the very least. And because of my argument earlier with saying that it wasn't a one-on-one -on -one battle, the scenario would be different in question, and you would have to argue that because they're relative of what I've uh, said earlier, that he could blitz pain before he could do one of his juices, essentially. Uh, 
A very hard counter to that would be the comparison of performances against Sonnen, respectively. Payne had three of his passive Payne at his strongest form in the Rain Village, destroyed by Jiraiya, while conversely, a 14 year old Itachi fodderized Orochimaru and actually caused him to never mess with him again because he was so dominant in his performance that Orochimaru was basically scared senseless. Um, so I was, that, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I was referring to like Casey and one Naruto and B, not like the Sonnen opponents. You know oh, I mean? well. I would, I would just go back yeah. to what Itachi did to that Nagato. He just he blitzed him. So we're talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. You were so talking we, to a, we were, yeah, yeah. We've already like said our piece on the speed thing, I think. Then so yeah, yeah. Um, did you have anything uh, else, or do you want to go to conclusions? Up to you. Um, honestly, yeah. So I just wanted to say, like, I, I don't think Genjutsu would be much of a factor, being that there's no empirical uh, feats of like. Um, a Monk Gecko from Itachi really affecting a Rinnegan user. The Rinnegan is obviously above the EMS, which is above the Monk Gecko as well, so it's like a evolved Dojutsu. Um, there is the fact that um, they are corpses, essentially, and if they are relative in speed, uh, King of Hell can always revive one of them. Uh, the multiple dogs would require Itachi to do an Amaterasu to even get rid of it or seal it, or something of that matter, which would uh, distract him at the very least and allow... The Diva Path or one of the other abilities to just, um, well, let's just say the Diva Path, for example, just to levitate. And Itachi can't do anything about that. And he can just use the Chewbacca Tensei to really uh, seal the deal. Because if you've seen Itachi like, lay hands on one other paths, potentially, then it does cause for drastic measures. And um, being as that I've, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll just say that uh, for now. So Sorry. to counter the, the Renegon and Sharingan, uh, negation argument. There's actually a, a feat where an Obuto and, and Kakashi are both uh, enacting upon Genjutsu on each other. So it actually proves that Renegons and Sharingans can affect each other and that it's not the case that the Renegon is superior and immune to uh, even Mangekyo Sharingan or Sharingan Genjutsu. We see Obito and Kakashi utilizing Genjutsu against each other. They both say, "Let's stop playing games." And that's with the Genjutsu. I think Kakashi says, it, "If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I could uh, yes. I could look for it. I don't, I don't have it on me, but I could look for it if you want the proof that that happened. But it certainly did. Um, so simply put, Itachi's Mangekyo would certainly work on uh, Nagato. He's more intelligent. I think uh, statistically and empirically, that's reinforced as well. We see Itachi get the best perform. He's more cutthroat than Pain. If we're talking about in character, um, he's more cutthroat. He doesn't second guess himself, um, and that's on top of the fact that which I've already established, he's faster. So if we're talking about a guy that's more cutthroat and superior in speed, and can affect you with Genjutsu as I've established based off the Obito and Kakashi, I guess anti feat to destroy the premise that Renegons are immune to Genjutsu, then he'd simply put Itachi as the advantage. Now, if it comes to him facing the six pass of Pain. That would be neg negligible because they're inferior in speed to Nagato anyway. It would just be slower opponents fighting Itachi. It wouldn't be Edo Nagato level speed opponents fighting Itachi. It'd be arbitrarily times slower opponents fighting Itachi, which would just be easier for him. Um, he's just dealing with weaker opponents, just more of them, in comparison to a stronger Edo Nagato, who he's faster than anyway. Um, so that's my counter to the Renegon argument, being immune to Genjutsu and. Yeah, a couple more. Okay, a little more on top of that. So, uh, Shinobi, um, just really quick, uh, I know you're going to respond to that, but can you re uh, clarify what your argument was for the Rinnegan to negate the Genjutsu? Because I, 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 I don't remember it. I apologize. Yeah, let me just. Uh, so, there is obviously a, a time when, like, the pains were obviously in the Genjutsu. Uh, yeah. So, let me just drop that. Yeah. I believe this is it. Yeah, so, okay, so essentially when the three passive pains in the rain village are caught underneath the uh, frog song, um, Jiraiya specifically states that it's again due to that paralyzes the nerves and your mind. Now, if the mind was connected, then it would imply that they all would be affected, correct? Like all six passive pains. But as we saw later, um, whenever he felt like it, the Oscar path was able to literally decapitate not decapitate, but delimb uh, Jiraiya's arm, and yeah. it, was, it was basically a matter of him wanting to do so. So again, Jutsu that was inhibited on these passive pains was obviously audible. So that's the only time when they are caught and, and empirically shown Genjutsu. Now, let's say the Sukiyomi does even work. I'll just steal man that for a second. Let's say it okay. does even work on one path of pain. Um, you'd have to argue that Itachi can. Uh, Sukiyomi all of them 
to be uh, to be detrimental. You'd have to argue that Nagato can already sense Itachi like built-in pressure in his eye and knows when he's about to unleash a uh, Monkey Echo based Jutsu. And so you have to argue that he could Tsukiyomi all of them prior to them like even reacting to it. Um, and again, uh, it, it's a matter of I, I guess speed that, that we've argued earlier. Um, it's up to the people to decide upon that, of course. But basically, yep. my argument is that he can only Tsukiyomi one if I'm steel manning it. That wouldn't play much of a factor because Nagato can always sense it or pain, rather. I mean, and uh, yeah, if it really gets down to it, the most problematic path would have to be the one to deliver the final blow, you know? Yeah, and going back to my argument, he's superior to all six. He would probably dispose of... If he if he did deduce, which wouldn't take long, that he needs to he needs to attack one, and there has to only be one pain left for the Genjutsu to affect Nagato himself, he would dispose of the other five very easily. He's superior in speed to even Edo Nagato, who's a superior in speed to the six passive pain, as I, as I have substantiated based off the performances uh, when we see these uh, versions of Nagato respectively execute their attacks. Simply put, it would probably come down to the diva path, and at that point, it would certainly affect Nagato, similar to how Hinata's punch, when he, when she punched Nagato trying to save, uh, not Nagato, but the diva path, trying to save Naruto, it affected Nagato as well. So, simply put, it's very rational to conclude that a Genjutsu would affect him as well. He'd get caught on it, because he's seeing from the diva's pass eyes only, and only his eyes, because all the paths are disposed of, and it would certainly affect him. Uh, the, the, the field of vision has been limited to just one set of eyeballs. It's no longer 360, and that contentious, ambiguous aspect is no longer even a problem because, because again, Itachi is significantly superior to the six passive pain, as I, has, as I have proven uh, several times. So, um, Yeah, I mean, I can see where you're coming from, but there's nothing really shown to really provide that to be a valid point, so I'll just stick with what is I, known, I suppose. I think he's not up punching the diva path and it affecting Nagato physically himself reinforces the notion that attacks would affect him. Um, and, and the fact that the field division is only now solely on the two eyeballs within the diva path's head also reinforces that that perception problem and several eyes being used by Nagato would no longer be a factor. So the most rational conclusion based off he's not up punching the diva path and affecting Nagato is that again, Jutsu would also affect him. Um, yeah, but that... Attack did affect him. That pain, though, was, again, not powered by a prime Nagato, and that Nagato just unleashed a chaotic ten or Shinra Tensei, so he was extremely fatigued and weak, and by the time he even fought, um, he Well, knocked regardless, it. I don't think that'd play a factor, because you're either, a Dojutsu is either immune to a Genjutsu or it isn't. I don't think it's voluntary, at least to my knowledge, I haven't seen that, to where you need to have an a arbitrary level of chakra to it be immune to a Genjutsu. I've never seen that to be the case. You're either immune to it or you're not. Um, so simply put, he would be caught in it regardless whether he was in his prime or not. Or uh, I'm sorry, power. I'm getting, I'm kind of confused here. Like, how are we correlating he nodded again, Jutsu again? It's not again, Jutsu. It's an attack that was able to inflict uh, damage on Nagato himself. Yeah. It, so it, it, it if you guys don't that. mind, I can clarify unless uh, unless you don't want me to. Um, but I can just clarify what yeah, Jay's I, saying if it makes more sense. I think yeah, we got I think, it. Okay, I can clarify. Yeah. It. yeah. So essentially. The very fact that an attack did affect Nagato through the, uh, I guess, attack being executed with, with, with on the diva path reinforces my premise that it would uh, other attacks will work as well. That's just the most guaranteed premise based based off what we do see. Mm, my premise is further, it, yeah, but my premise is more further suggested because if no attacks, if we could conclude no attacks would work on him, then he touched, then he not as punch would have affected him at all. So there's more of a chance that my premise is guaranteed. Uh, than yours because we do see him get affected by something rather than nothing um so that yeah, possibility but, uh, exists and i think it's more guaranteed than than your antithetical stance okay so i i'm, I'm kind of getting like the correlation confused but like i understand that like pain can get he, like hit physically but i don't see how that correlates to how someone can obviously like infect him with genjutsu as well i don't see the correlation we did see all. three passive pain get caught with a genjutsu even though it was auditory so yeah, that's it another, was audible, exactly. That's another yeah. piece of uh, datum within my set of datums to reinforce my premise. Well, conversely, there's none to reinforce yours. Well, the running on is that more valid. Ocular, the, the running on is an ocular dojutsu. It's not a, like an audible dojutsu. But again, yeah, we mean. see we see an anti feet where Kakashi and Obito are utilizing genjutsus on each other. Yeah, but obviously, oh, Obito obviously wasn't going all out though. I mean, you literally let Kakashi yeah, stab him in the heart. You'd like, have to prove that know? he voluntarily allowed genjutsu on himself. 
Well, it's kind of hard to say that, like, it for sure did because he literally has the same eye and a Rinnegan as well. So it's kind of like saying when, like, Sasuke put Itachi in a, in a Genjutsu, that means that all Gen, all, all base three Tomoe Sharingan users can put Mangyako people in a, a Genjutsu as well. But, you know yeah, what I mean? Essentially, the Kakashi, the Kakashi and Obito feet just reinforces the premise that Rinnegan users can be caught in Genjutsu. Which okay. reinforces I mean, my premise. Yeah, I, I completely understand. I just think it's more rational to say that Obito wasn't going all out in a fight, and there obviously was an emotional attachment to Kakashi for several reasons. But we'll just we'll just leave that there, I suppose. Uh, despite yeah. Ita- I would say when it comes to the Itachi argument, because you used him to reinforce your premise, those were real Genjutsu. Th- those weren't. He wasn't pr- pretending to be caught in them. He was caught in them. Um, of course, he could have ended the fight quicker if he would have to blitz Sasuke, but he allowed himself to be caught in Genjutsu. So Sasuke could feel like the hero, which was his overall premise with the battle in the first place. So simply put, the argument that these Genjutsus were not real is definitely not correct. And the, the premise that Obito was not caught in a Genjutsu is not correct. You'd have to prove that you could voluntarily be susceptible to a Genjutsu with a Renegon, or you could turn that immunity off. You'd have to prove that the immunity mm-hmm. is sort of activated and deactivated by a Renegon user, which you can't because we never see that uh, reinforced. So my premise is the most guaranteed because of such that anti-feat, because Hinata was able to punch the diva path and affect Nagato, and because of the fact we did we did see past the pain get caught in an in a genjutsu. All those all those datums point to my premise being the most guaranteed rather than the antithetical stance, which is the one you're trying to present. There is no well, piece, empirical pieces of evidence to suggest your premise. There's no empirical pieces of evidence that suggest that Sukiyomi can work on the Rinnegan though as well though. Yeah, but so. the the pieces I referenced further guarantee my premise rather than yours they're different in nature though audible genjutsu is not sukiyomi at all it's completely different and in the data it's not a deduction but it's rather a more guaranteed induction in comparison to your weaker induction because you have no datums at all to reference for your premise just pure speculation all i'm saying is it's never been empirically shown to work on pain correct despite that it's suggested it there's there's a better premise to suggest that possibility rather than your antithetical stance because again mine's reinforced by empirical pieces of evidence while yours conversely is pure speculation induction i would say triumphs over speculation it's a more valid form of deduction well i uh, just dropped a scan um basically it's just itachi saying that only those the same Kenkai genkai essentially could possibly defeat me so um what you could definitely interpret from that is people with the sharing gun uh, specifically with Monk Yako, because let's be real, someone with the Tomoe is not, shouldn't be able to repel against the Monk Yako, right? And obviously the Rinnegan is a very evolved state of that as well, so by confession, Itachi is literally implying that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, like, it's it's basically, you'd have to prove that he can, and you'd have to prove it would actually reach him in time before it reaches a diva path, which is the most problematic one, because... I've already said earlier that Nagato can sense when Itachi's going to do something. And yeah, Itachi can only use these jutsu so many times. Like, his chakra, it, you know... Like, despite that, he would be slower. So even if he sensed it, he just wouldn't be able to react, which I've reinforced and proven. So he might be able to sense something, but he won't be able to stop it in time. Just like he, could, just like he couldn't stop Itachi from, from blitzing him twice. He just can't Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say proven, but I, I understand where you're coming from, though, for sure. We're further guaranteed... Yeah, in comparison to your antithetical stance, which is less guaranteed, because there's no empirical piece of evidence to reinforce it. It's basically okay. a theory with, with empirical evidence versus a hypothesis with no evidence remotely. It's basically what's the premises that are suggested here. All right, well, I think we've gone over the Genju, so I don't think I have anything else to add to that, per se. Uh, is there anything yeah, else you want to go over, perhaps, or...? Um, that was all my main points. Um, do you want to go to conclusion or do you have anything else? Uh, mm. It's up to you. I feel like I've gotten the better of the exchange. It's up to the judges, of course, but. Uh. Yeah, I think we can, I think we can conclude, man. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, uh, do you want to go, oh. uh, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? It's up to you on the conclusion. Uh, do you mind if I go? Yeah, you can go first. It's all, it's all good. Okay, so I'll just uh, I'll just say that based off the empirical feeds provided with um, Nagato being able to go against KCM1, Naruto, and B simultaneously is also equivalent to something that Itachi did as well. So it definitely interprets their combat speed being relative and reaction time as well. 
Uh, we know that Nagato has information on Itachi. Um, he obviously knew about the Amaterasu. He knows about him obviously being a fellow Ikoski member. Um, uh, Nagato is an exceptional sensory ninja, so uh, he can utilize that in his advantage state with uh, the extra perceptive eyes that engulf his uh, surrounding environment, essentially. And um, with the plethora of abilities, whether it be the uh, path of pain that uh, can absorb, or it could be the animal path with the dogs or the chameleon, or it could be the diva path, which can levitate literally and become aerial and uh, deliver Chewbacca Tensei or Chaotic Shimmer Tensei if needed. Um, because of these multitude of abilities and extra perception time, and because of the combat and reaction time in terms of speed that's been provided, there's nothing that Itachi has in terms of favor and tangible stats, at least. Now, when it comes to hacks abilities, Itachi's main arsenal is usually Genjutsu, which we've gone over. Um, there's more to suggest that Tsukiyomi doesn't work on the Rinnegan because A, it hasn't been shown, and B, there are ways to rationalize why it wouldn't. Um, and also, uh, we didn't even go over the Susano or the Yadimir or uh, the freaking Tosca Blade, but... Um, Basically, uh, yeah, there's just uh, there's just a, a rationalization from the war arc that one Chewbacca Tensei would be more than enough to uh, take on Itachi by himself. Um, he literally did it right in front of Itachi. Like, he just clapped his hands and no one did a damn thing about it. Naruto wasn't restrained. B was fat, chilling. You know, um, they literally just saw him do it. So, uh, yeah, basically, if it came down to it, um, Chewbacca Tensei would be the... Uh, win con in this in this fight but either way it's extremely contentious and uh, i appreciate you jay for uh, taking the time to do this bro oh yeah um but my conclusion so to conclude this debate as far as ap it is un it is inconclusive and unquantifiable via hitchin's razor there's no evidence for one side or the other uh, itachi not you know voluntarily volunteering to destroy it on his own does not prove that he can't destroy it um it just proves his intelligence so the AP analysis is inconclusive and it's negligible anyways because of my speed analysis, which I'll get into now. The fight that we see is illustrated in a certain way. We see several sort of empirical pieces of evidence to suggest a blitzing taking place. We see, again, an exclamation point of a Nagato's head. Nagato now using all six arms that, as we see the Divi path using the pain arc. And because of that, we can successfully classify it as a blitz. Uh, my induction, if you don't want to give me the benefit of the doubt and call it a deduction, is further guaranteed because the empirical piece of evidence I am referencing suggests my premise, while my opponent's antithetical stance is negated and somewhat contradicted, actually. So I think I've won that point because of that. Now, as far as Genjutsu, I've given pieces of evidence to suggest that my induction is stronger than my opponent's speculation as there's no datums in his premise used to reinforce his premise whatsoever. Well, conversely, I brought up Kakashi and Obito using Genjutsu, Hinata punching the diva path, affecting Nagato, indicating that if only one path is left, a Genjutsu would most likely work. Um, so those reinforce that premise. And as far as the narrative representation, Obito clearly speaks in higher regards for Itachi than he does for Nagato. He literally calls him an underling. He sarcastically says, oh, the Invincible Pain almost lost to Jiraiya, indicating he doesn't look at him very highly. Um, while conversely, he says, oh, now that Itachi's gone, there's no threat. He literally admits he could have died if Itachi knew anything more about him. And this was a sick Itachi, which just further, further reinforces that a prom Itachi is even more dangerous. Uh, the fact that Obito had to negotiate with Obito at a young age, uh, excuse me, with Itachi at a young age, to massacre the clan implies his level of respect from the very beginning. While conversely, he literally walked walked into the rain village and told Nagato, hey, you're going to work for me now with no regard for what he's capable of. And that never really changed again because he calls him an underling after his death even. Um, so all these aspects that I have reinforced, uh, that I have provided and reinforced further prove that my premise is correct and that Itachi an abundance of probabilities would defeat Pain, Nagato, the six pass of Pain, Edo Nagato, Prime Nagato, etc. So that's my conclusion to uh, Itachi being the better combatant. All right, and there it is, huh? There you guys have it. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, in chat, com tell me your thoughts. Let us know who yeah, you thought got it. And I'll like give, my, I'll like, give uh, my judgment in a bit, but look, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Yes, sir. That was like my first ever like like legit legit debate. Yeah, that was, so I'm gonna be that was good. Thank you. That was, that was good, good. Yeah, I'm not like bullshitting or anything. That was really good and how you went on it. 
Um, you both did good. It was a good debate overall. Like it was not. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think it was like you know what I mean like completely one side or anything like that. Like like you know no diff on either part I don't, at all. That's being dishonest right there. But um, what's coming up? It was good. It was really good. It's a great topic, so, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a very contentious topic, honestly. <laughs> All right, folks, if you guys want to give your take on the chat before Batman gives his take, and then, of course, people watching the recording, watching the video, uh, let us know as well what you thought. Yes, uh, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I guess Batman can get to the uh, judging. Yeah, so overall, very similar to what Spencer said, at least when it comes to, like, overall, it was really good. You guys did really good, especially Shinobi for your first time. Um, but the whole circular thing, you know, it's, it's whatever. Everybody fucking, fucking does it. Um, but regardless of all that, um, basically, you know, I can give it another listen. Um, but from what I heard overall, like I said, tons and tons of good points from Shinobi. Um, you know, I'll just basically look at my notes. So, like, basically, like, Shinobi, you know, just saying, like, you know, Nagato uh, was fighting Naruto and Bees and Jutsu. Um, since he's being controlled by Kabuto, that's why he got hit. So it wasn't like a speed blitz. Um, if it was like a 1v1 situation, it would, it would not go the same. Um, that was like the main premise or whatever. And the uh, sick, and you know, he like even responded with the whole sick attach thing, or how like that doesn't correlate due to you know, clearly like with the whole Minato scaling and aiming to Casey of Naruto. Um, he did eventually bring up the Zetsu thing. We weren't able to get that scan, but I brought up a scan yeah. that I thought he was referring to. Um, what's it called? Where the scan is basically says, like, in a nutshell, that like he didn't even think, like, he thought, like, oh, but I, I'm surprised he even thought like pain could be defeated or whatever. And then Shinobi was basically correlating that to Itachi, um, and they, they're aware, blah blah, whatever. Um, and then, which, uh, other than that, like, then it goes on to, you know, uh, his other points, pain use and sensory range, you'd see all that, the passive pain's lack of mobility, the extra perception, Tendo can fly, summoning visible, was able to get behind Naruto, hold KCM, um, it, you know, they, uh, same thing, fought Naruto and, and B, proving, uh, proving that there has to be some form of relativity. Um, pain can negate mind genjutsu from Sage and Jiraiya, all that stuff. Like, that was his, uh, but I mind you, I'm like saying what his arguments were, by the way, guys. Yeah. Um, and then he also said Itachi can only, uh, MS one of the passive pains. Nagato was also not at full power. Um, what's it called when, uh, he was affected by Hinata and all that. And then, um, he also said Obito was not going all out against Kakashi. And then while I, um, and as an analysis for Jay the Great, um, basically his main thing, because the most important thing of this debate is speed, obviously, right? So uh, Nagato, um, he said Nagato wasn't using all his arms, uh, further proving, and he did prove that with the scan. He was only um, using four, and I believe like the other one where it was like, what, fucking what? Yeah, like six. Six? Yeah. yeah, six. Yeah. yeah. But he did prove he wasn't using all his arms, and therefore connecting the notion that he couldn't react accordingly, like, and got speed blitz in a sense, and that he also had an exclamation mark. To meaning basically showing that he was aware of the attack coming um and the fact that he couldn't use other arms to use like any of his like you know renegon abilities or to like move out of the way or anything like that etc that therefore um the fact that he still got hit by itachi um you know what i mean that's why it had to be a speed blitz even though with all the shinobi's points where you know he was taking his soul he was focusing on whatever blah blah, blah and then like it was uh, wasn't him behind the wheel it was capital instead but that was basically jay's reputation all that where bottom line is Kabuto still ordered him to kill Naruto. Um, well, not you get what I'm saying to capture them, get Naruto yeah. B, um, and and basically, you know, he's basically at full power, right? Going fully at him, and so the fact that he was aware of Itachi's presence, you know, he's going full fully all at it, sees him and everything, and he didn't do anything, gets hit. Therefore, all that would be redundant, and it has to be a speed blitz in a sense. Um, and then Kabuto, or um, uh, furthermore. Let me see what else. Yep, so I uh, said that. And then, oh, um, other thing uh, Jay said, this was also really good for Jay because I, I feel like he had a lot more with the whole uh, narrative uh, line of scaling. So when it comes to the scaling narratively, period, um, what's it called? Because the only thing that really Shinobi had was like the Zetsu in comparison. But while for Jay, he had more with uh, Obito's analysis of, of comparing Pain and Itachi to each other. Um, so that was definitely more stronger, in my opinion. Um, to where, you know, just like what Jay said, refers to Pain as his underling. He's, you know, he's the leader. Um, he orders Pain around, basically, you know, thinks of him like a lapdog in a sense. But with Itachi from the beginning all the way to the end, even at his weakest state, he was always, you know, 
basically thinking of him as a rival, you know, felt threatened, et cetera, feels the need to be precautious. Um, and basically, you know, where his power could either threaten him or protect or kill him or potentially, once again, like Jay said, be a rival, bare minimum. Um, Tachi made Obito do a deal, like what Jay said, um, to where, you know, basically, here's a deal. Whether at the fight, he explained all that with compromise, et cetera, all his definitions. Um, he also said Obito made no moves or stopped his deal out of consideration um, for his, you know, his power. Um, you know, so basically, like, throughout the whole time of the series of Naruto, the, the fact that Obito decided not to do anything, whatever, blah, blah, was still showing that he was basically, you know, you know, treating Itachi as a precaution and to be basically cautious of his power. That would further establish that, you know, he, it's clearly because of, he doesn't want any problems with Itachi. Um, and then, basically, he says Nagato is stronger than the Pass of Pains um, to where, you know, uh, basically, the passive pains won't, won't have the same, uh, you know, speed feats or scalings in a sense. So they have better fe uh, speed feats in comparison to the passive pains, as Jay said. Passive pains would be slower. Um, Genjutsu worked on Obito, who had Rinnegan. Tachi scales over, um, which would basically uh, him going back to uh, something else separate. And he also said Tendo pain, if you know, where since all the other pains are nowhere near as strong as Tendo, excuse me, uh, they would be dealt with to where he would be alone. Therefore, guaranteeing a Genjutsu. I mean, it would affect him due to Hinata's punch hitting the Tendo Pain and, and uh, connecting and affecting Nagato um, and all that. So, therefore, basically, his main thing was with the fact that Nagato could feel something from Hinata and the fact that uh, the passive pains were affected. Um, well, the Renegon Obito was affected by Genjutsu along with they also talked about the whole, uh, you know, sound Genjutsu thing. Uh, but then Shinobi did say that's not ocular, that's not the same. So, you know, blah, blah. And there's. And etc. And then Shinobi did bring up with the whole uh, Tachi statement, where even Itachi says you need to have like the same bloodline or same caliber for like you know three Toma, three Tomo, Migekyo, whatever. And running on obviously being at the peak top, therefore that should basically conclude that running on should be able to deal with it or resist whatever. Um, see, so that was his main thing in order, in order basically as counter. So overall, it was really really good. Um, yeah. If I had to basically give a verdict, I like if I had to pick, maybe I could be wrong. Who knows? Um, I'd say it would go with Jay. The only reason was just because it just felt stronger, in a sense, for the Speed Blitz to be competent, if that makes sense. Um, and then, basically, uh, when it comes to the whole narrative scaling, that was a lot more better compared to the one thing that Shinobi had, if that made sense. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And I felt like if we gave more with the narrative, then it could kind of be, you know, the scales would kind of balance, if that makes sense. Um, but mainly correlating to the speed thing, that was good on both parts, but with the fact that, you know, him saying Nagato was aware, you know, and he didn't even have arms and blah, 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 et cetera, yada, yada, like, th therefore, he should have been able to react or move or do something, right? And he couldn't. Um, sh and Shinobi did have another point I forgot to mention where, like, he's an Edo, so it didn't even matter if he got hit. He could just regenerate. He did bring that up as a refutation as well. But the reason, and then, but Jay's response to that was... Well, he, that's that would you know be kind of kind of redundant because you know he has orders to basically fulfill to capture those two and to basically just not get hit, right? To not basically get hit or be dealt with or potentially you know incapacitated as an Edo or sealed or anything like that, um, and this and that. So therefore, that wouldn't matter, and it wasn't due to him just like just since he's an Edo, that's why he can get hit or whatever. Um, from my memory, that's what Jay was saying in a sense. Yeah, and pretty much. Overall, like that's basically what I'm working with. You know, I will admit maybe yeah. I could be wrong unless you know I got the speed. But the speed thing is the most important, obviously. So, um, and if yeah. the speed thing, given that means anything else, not uh, or all the passive pains doesn't matter with jutsu, yada yada, etc. All of that contentious aspect of it, he just basically speed blitzes and Totsuka blades him, you know, or whatever. <laughs> or, it's it's basically over, right? If he has speed for that, um. What's it called? And that's what's kind of what you're working with, and that's just basically it. And even if like I didn't give the speed thing to Jay, and let's say like I fucking like say like oh, maybe that maybe that's just you know equal, or maybe Shinobi had it, whatever. The fact that he still had more stronger stuff with the narrative, I still basically would come to the same conclusion that narratively scaling overall wise, Tachi more than likely has the edge because of Obito thinking his power is greater in comparison to Pain, and. The only thing we really had from Shinobi was the Zetsu thing. We didn't have anything else. Also, so that, that child that... of prophecy thing. I just wanted to. Say. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm fucking tripping. Yeah, child of prophecy and him having the both Renegons and everything. Yeah, yeah. Forgot. There, there was that narrative thing too. Um, what's it called? But yeah, that's 
that's just kind of what I'm um, going with. And with uh, the whole OBDO you know, gauging, you know, comparing those two, um, you know, that's just what we got. Yeah, yeah, that's all I remember. Basically, that's yeah. it. But it was certainly, it was good, yeah, it was certainly a good debate. Yeah, it was a good debate. That's, and, uh, it was good to finally get my. Uh... You know, rust off, man. So thank you, bro. Yeah. Appreciate it. It was fun. Definitely. Yeah, it was definitely fun. I haven't debated in a while either. It's been a while. Thanks. And thanks to everyone in the audience too. Thanks guys yeah. for uh, checking it out, man. Seriously. Checking it out. Let us know who you thought won. Are guys watching the recording on YouTube? Let us know as well. Um, next week, me and Batman got a couple, a philosophy based one and uh, another yeah. power scaling one. That's going to be good as well. I'll be there. Uh, yeah, We're, we'll have Chinobi as the judge now. Um, but yeah. I hope you folks enjoyed that. that. Uh, uh, I think Strange <laughs> wants to speak. I don't know if you want to let him, but that's up to you, Dan. Yeah, let me let me end the recording real quick. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, folks, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let us know any topics you would like to discuss. Maybe IRL. I've done a few of those in the past. I know you guys enjoy IRL topics. Um, but yeah, it was a good one. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you in the in the next video. Later, Sorry. guys.